Hi everyone, thank you for joining me again. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the five common welding joints. Now, if you've never heard of the five common welding joints before, don't worry. You can think of the five common welding joints as the five different ways that metal pieces can be fitted up against each other and then welded to form assemblies. The first welding joint that we're gonna be talking about is the T-joint. This is probably one of the most recognizable welding joints because of how when the two pieces of metal come together, they form a T, or in this case, an inverted T. Typically how we would create this joint is by taking one plate in the vertical position, and then taking a second plate that's laying horizontally, and then we stick the vertical plate on top of the horizontal plate, and then weld that in place. And in this case, you can see that on both sides of the vertical plate, there are 90 degree angles. And on the left of this image, you can see a 3D version of what the T-joint would look like. And here are a few real images of what a T-joint looks like to give you a better idea. The next joint is called the butt joint. This is where we take two plates and butt them up against each other, against their edges, and then weld them in place. It's a fairly simple concept, so let's go ahead and take a look at the 3D image on the left. The seam that's created when we butt the two plates against each other, that seam where the edges meet is where we're going to be welding. Now this is just a beginner's tutorial, so both plates are butted up against each other all the way. In some other more advanced cases, there's gonna be a gap in between the two plates, and this is what's called the root gap, but that'll be covered in another video. And here are some actual images of two pieces of metal that have been welded together to form a butt joint. This next welding joint is called the lap joint. Now, you can kind of think of it as two pieces of metal being laid on top of each other and then welded in place, but it's a little bit different than that. The two pieces are laid on top of each other, but then they're offset slightly so that it appears that one piece is hanging slightly over and off to the side than the other, or you can say that the two pieces are overlapping. And the welds would be placed in the areas where the materials overlap, not on the edges where they're flush. And here are a few pictures of an actual lab joint to give you a better idea. Up next is the edge joint, which is commonly confused with the butt joint. Whereas in the butt joint, the two pieces are laid flat or in whatever position is needed, and then their edges are butted up against each other, and then the weld being placed where they meet. With the edge joint, the two pieces of material are laid completely on one another and then welded along the edge. And here are some pictures of an actual edge joint. The fifth and final common welding joint is called the corner joint. This is where we take two plates, one that's lying horizontal and one that's lying vertical, and we bring them to the point where they are perpendicular to each other. But instead of creating a T-joint, we just set their corners against each other, thus creating the corner joint. Now, you may have noticed that in all the other common welding joints, they all can be welded on both sides. This joint is no different. However, the difference is when you're welding on the outer corner, it's called an outside corner joint. If you're welding on the inside corner, it's called an inside corner joint. And believe me, the two actually have a little bit of a difference when you're welding them together. And here are some images of a corner joint. 